what's up everybody welcome back to the channel i'm preston and we are at hidden falls adventure park today gonna run some off-road trails uh, in particular gonna run the wet and wild trail be interesting to see how the jeep mojave does on the four star out five rated trail i have run it before in a stock jeep gladiator rubicon and uh, other than one section that I had to do the bypass for, uh, it handled it pretty flawlessly. So now the last time I was out here, I did not have a sway bar disconnect yet on the Gladiator Mojave. And I've since then installed a set of JKS quick disconnect for the sway bar so we can allow this front axle to articulate more and keep all four tires planted on the ground more. So let's go ahead and get started. Not even a few minutes into my trail run, I ran across someone who apparently wasn't happy with how fast I was driving. So let's down, dude. You're gonna kill us with dust. It's one of the rules, and we don't want to around with that. Okay. I was going about the speed limit of the park park speed limit i don't know what he was talking about i mean it's a trail it hasn't rained in a while it gets dusty <laughs> if you can't handle dust maybe you shouldn't be off-roading <laughs> so wet today.
I may have just reached the limit of the Jeep Gladiator Mojave's capabilities here. I mean, I could attempt further and risk tearing something up. And hell, it may even make it up, but it doesn't mean you're going to come through unscathed. You know, it's still in stock form. I have a lot that I have, would like to do to this Jeep, and it's my daily driver. So I think I'm going to err on the side of caution here and take the bypass, uh, which is this gnarly little steep dirt hill over here. So it still could be a little bit of a challenge in itself, but we'll see. See, I bent the uh, bent this uh, part of the hitch receiver, but um, that looks like the bumper held up pretty well. Even used part of the uh, rock slider. There is two bypasses to this obstacle here. You have this one, and then a little bit further back, this one spurs off and allows you to bypass it. And actually, that's the route we took last time in the Rubicon. Well, that ended up being a little bit more of a chore than I had anticipated.
All right, let's keep moving. Party foul. Mm -hmm. You know, I will say that the Mojave's suspension, even with the sway bar disconnected, it feels stiffer or tighter. I think that's because it doesn't, those shocks don't extend quite as far as say the Rubicon shocks do, but that's probably also why this thing handles so well when it's on the road. Also, the crawl ratio is noticeably not as low as a Rubicon. Uh, <laughs> case in point right there. Um, it stalls a lot easier, especially with a manual. With the Rubicons, four to one transfer case. I mean, you can just go almost dead stop without putting the clutch in and stalling it, without having to put the clutch in to keep it from stalling. All right, coming up on a ledge here. But you know, I actually think that'd be suitable for most people. I mean, most people don't take their Jeep on this level of off-roading. And, um, they could definitely benefit from the on-road feel of it. Whoa. That's its one vulnerable spot is that um, the rear lower control arm bracket on the frame end. <laughs> Just uh, just noticed that I veered off the main trail some. Not seen this obstacle before. If you look at the map here, this red line is how I've ran this trail in the past. And uh, somehow I ended up in this area. But hopefully this connects back up with the main trail. Looks like if I just stay as far left as I can, it should be okay. Get a boulder there. Really tight here. This is where a Jeep over a heavy duty truck like the Power Wagon or any other off road truck definitely has its advantage. I'm going to go ahead and lock the rear here. Just give it that added boost. All right, looks like we're halfway out. Piece of cake. But don't tell them what's up ahead here. Sometimes it's a really good idea to scout the trail up ahead if you're not sure what's up ahead. Because it might be something you don't want to undertake and sometimes when you're already into something it's hard to get out. Oh look at that. That's not the way we're going, but <laughs> That is one gnarly steep hill climb or descent. I believe that and that previous obstacle I could not get over. Probably the reasons why this trail is four stars out of five. 
you can see there's a bypass this way. Other than that, it's it's been fairly easy going in a stock Jeep Gladiator. Looks like we have met up back with the track I took last time or the main trail. So this should be smooth sailing here on out. Nearing the exits. We're gonna exit onto North, the North Pole Trail which I featured on this channel a couple years ago. Ran it with the 2004 uh, Jeep TJ Rubicon. That is a definitely a fun trail if you've never ran it. Go check out that video if you haven't seen it. Now, which way do we go from here? I think I'm going to go left or west, west northwest. Uh, I'm going to go back via North Spur after the North pole trail and then get back onto park road too uh it's getting a little late in the afternoon don't have too much more time to play out here but uh it's been fun about Hidden Falls Adventure Park is their air station. I think it's clear that the Mojave does really well, even in stock form, but it has its limits. I think a mere small lift kit and some larger tires will definitely help this, as it would any Jeep, but definitely the Mojave. Has some added features over your basic Gladiator, uh, having the rear locker and the uh, 410 gears, and the Fox shocks are amazing. They make it ride amazing on-road. Maybe not as quite as well when rock crawling, but when you're on washboardy roads, it handles excellent. And it drives so well. I mean, you just want to drive it anywhere. So that was uh, the Wet n Wilds Trail at Hidden Falls Adventure Park in a stock 2022 Jeep Gladiator Mojave. Please stay tuned to the channel for the next adventure. Actually, next week's video, we're going to be heading out to Barrett Jackson, the world's uh, largest collector auto auction in Scottsdale, Arizona. They'll be showcasing the new 2024 Ford Mustang. So it'll be very amazing to see that. I uh, really enjoyed my time there last year. And as always, We'll see you next time.